Welcome back to New Day Northwest. A new book is taking a look at the beginnings of San Francisco's drag scene through the life of Queen Doris Fish. The story comes from a dynamic period in queer history from Stonewall to AIDS to a conversation continuing now here in present day. Author Craig Seligman joins me now along with his husband, Sylvana Nova, who previously performed with Doris Fish. That's right. That's exciting stuff, and we're going to get to that in a moment. But first, welcome to our show. We're so glad to have you Thank here. You. Thank you. Please introduce our audience to who Doris was. Doris was a drag queen who was, in his time, famous, especially in San Francisco mm -hmm. and Sydney, where he was born. Mm -hmm. And he uh, was really a leader in gay visibility in those years. Mm -hmm. So um, following his life, I was able really to follow changes in what was happening in, uh, in gay visibility and history between Stonewall in 1969 mm -hmm. and Doris's death in 1991. Mm, too soon, a death that was Way too, too soon. soon. What role did Doris play in the perceptions of drag queens that changed between the 60s and now. Before Doris and Doris's generation of drag queens, mm -hmm. I should say, um, drag queens were female impersonators. They attempted to um, to look like women. Mm -hmm. uh, Doris never wanted to look fully like a woman because he said that would never have gotten him the attention that he wanted. Right. And he had a, what he called a pathological need for attention. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> he always. <laughs> He always wanted to remain uh, what he said uh, was a little bit crook, so you would know that something was not quite female about him, that right. you would know he was a man. Which is interesting because when you bring it up, I mean, you have to remember, you know, some like it hot and, and you know, Tony mm -hmm. Curtis dressing to look like a woman as mm -hmm. opposed to when we see modern drag now. It is as dramatic as possible and, and beautiful in, in its way. Um, Savannah, you performed with Doris. I did. Okay, Many what was that? Like, were you in Vegas in Space, which is a movie that, that they did? Yes, I'm in Vegas in Space. Oh, okay, so first of all, please share what it was like to, to perform with Doris and, and what that movie was all about. Well, as Craig said, Doris had a pathological need for attention, but it, he was performing, she was performing with us, a bunch of us, who also had the same need. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of strong egos going on. But Doris was very generous as a performer and nurtured people coming up mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I think that there was a general feeling, a very good feeling in every show in the movie that we were doing, that we were, it was a collaborative effort, mm -hmm. yeah. even if Doris did like to get the main mm. main focus. <laughs> <laughs> the head, but still enjoying everyone. So uh, the story of Doris and his circle mm -hmm. is inevitably also the story of AIDS. Yes. Um, I recently watched the farewell performance, This Is mm -hmm. My Life, and I was in tears. I mean, it's so moving to see you knew what was happening. What role did drag queens play in the epidemic, and how did it differ in San Francisco from, say, in other cities? Um, drag queens uh, really changed their role during the epidemic because at the beginning there was a lot of controversy in the gay community mm -hmm. about drag queens. It was uh, when we were still fighting for our rights mm -hmm. and a lot, of, um, a lot of people didn't want drag queens to be out in front because the TV cameras loved them mm -hmm. and they feared that they were a misrepresentation of gay people. Mm -hmm. During AIDS uh, that really changed. Drag queens were the people who would visit the AIDS wards and entertain the patients. Mm -hmm. who would perform at benefits, and they went from being kind of pariahs in the gay community to real culture heroes and keeper, keepers of the flame. Yeah, and, kind of moving things forward. And Doris had a very significant role in that, because she had a column in a paper and, and talked about having AIDS a lot, so. I should add that San Francisco was very different from other cities during the epidemic because it was a city where the mayor, Fe Dianne Feinstein, mm -hmm. and really the entire political establishment supported people with AIDS. Uh, so did the gay community and mm -hmm. so did the straight community. So it's very different from being in a place like New York where politicians, uh, where there was a mayor, Ed Koch, who was in the closet and wanted nothing to do with the gay community. San Francisco was really uh, a very supportive city. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. What do you think Doris's legacy is? 
I think the legacy of Doris and that whole generation of drag queens is the kind of irony that we see in drag today. Um, when we look at drag queens today, we no longer see female impersonators. Mm -hmm. We see uh, men or trans women uh, dressing to be fabulous, but not to fool you into thinking that they're anyone other than who they are. Mm -hmm. They're the embodiment of, a, of, a, of their, who, their greatest self. Exactly, who you want to be and not who somebody thinks you're supposed to be. I love it. What do you think Doris would think of the state of drag right now when you see RuPaul's Drag Race and you see anti-drag legislation, though, on the other side of that? Wh where would she be? Where would he be in all of this? Um, she or he, uh, both pronouns work. Thank you. Um, he, <laughs> would, he would be thrilled. Doris always was generous about bringing up uh, other drag queens, promoting drag. He would be so happy to see how uh, drag has become a, a real part of popular culture now, which it wasn't mm -hmm. in his day. Um, as far as anti-drag uh, and anti-trans legislation goes, uh, of course, he would be horrified, as yeah. are we all, mm -hmm. and he would be leading the fight against it, and that fight really never ends. Well, I can't tell you how much I, I cannot wait to finish reading this book and to have everyone else read it as well because I think there's just so much beauty in this in this story. So thanks to both of you for being here. Oh, it's thank, great. You. thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. And just a reminder, Craig and Silvana are holding an author event tonight, Monday, March 27th at 7 p.m. at Elliott Bay Book Company on Seattle's Capitol Hill. Go check it out.